Hello and welcome to Coffee and Conversation here on BTCN. I'm your host, Shishank Bengali, and it's my pleasure today to have Yuki Hanyu. He is the CEO of Integriculture. Uh, Dr. Hanyu, thanks for being with us today. Thank you very much for the invitation. I am the founder of the Shoji Meat Project and also the CEO of Integriculture Company. Very good. Thank you so much. We want to ask you uh, about Shoji Meat, uh, but I'll get to that in a second. Just tell us, to start off with, uh, tell us a bit about yourself and describe your role at Integriculture. The reason why I got into sciences was because I was so much into science fiction and it's now my turn to actually do some sci-fi. Then I was like uh, thinking about what to do and then landed on uh, cell cultured meat. And I, I found a Shoji meat project there uh, because that was, the, um, that was basically the, the easiest place to start. And also that was the way to find, uh, find, more, find people who are interested in this, uh, in this subject. And so the Shoji Meat Project came into being in 2014. And after that, um, uh, Integrity Culture Company was, like, um, was incorporated in 2015. Yeah, but after 2018, and so the, uh, the research progress has, um, has been much, much faster. And we're now into uh, launching Cell Culture Fagra in 2021. Yeah, so, so tell us, you know, there's been such a proliferation of, uh, you know, plant-based uh, meats. How does Shoujin meat work? And talk a, a little bit more about the sort of open source model that you guys are using to create this product. So things started with Shoujin meat project. And the reason why it started that way was basically that was the, uh, because without uh, financial or financial or even physical resources which would be like laboratory we had to start from somewhere and um, open source a diy bio experiments at home was pretty much the only way to do anything and but as we made some progress we also found out that the biggest problem with cell cultured meat is that it's very very expensive so doing a DIY and making it uh, lightweight also actually coincided with what has to be done. So we basically run with it. So like many other labs in the world starts with very expensive conventional method and try to make it cheap. But our approach was completely different. We basically used whatever was available, very, like, very cheap and available and make it better. So with COVID-19 basically disrupting supply chains for food around the world, how does that affect uh, the work you're doing on uh, on Shojin meat, and how does it affect uh, the outlook for for cell-based meat going forward? Disruptions by COVID-19 on food supply chain, uh, especially on meat, has got um, two fronts. One is very short-term, and the other is long-term thing. And for the very short term, um, it's actually it's the uh, supply chain disruptions by the by the pandemic, uh, such as cluster infections happening in. Meat packet and meat processing facilities, and that's already uh, made havoc in um, in the U.S. When the, uh, I think that was like pork factory, and we uh, suddenly we found out that uh, our current food system is actually quite fragile, especially when it comes to uh, this sort of like COVID nineteen situation. Well, that's good to hear. Um, and of course, looking beyond food, um, cell based products have a, a whole range of applications. I know, for example. Uh, Integriculture is working on uh, cell-based cosmetics, right? Can you talk a bit more about that? Yeah. One of the strengths of the, of the technology in, in Integriculture company is that um, the, uh, the, uh, the technology, is, which is called Calnet system, can actually do any types of cells of any species. So the product doesn't have to be food product. It could be non-food products, such as like cosmetics, or it could be some like medical for medical applications, or it could be fur or stuff like that. The current problem with cell cultured products is that it, uh, its unit price is very high. And that price is expected, expected to go down as we scale. But for the initially, at least for the initial phase, we, if we are to make some business sense with this technology, products with the highest unit price is the one to do first. And when, if it's food product, foie gras is one of the most um, most expensive expensive in especially unit price and but what's even better for business sense is actually cosmetics what do you see as the future of uh, cell-based products in the next five to ten years are we going to start to see cell-based products uh, popping up uh, on store shelves uh, in, in different forms 
I think that happens in, in a sequence, a sequence according to the uh, price of existing meat because um, we broadly say meat, but there are expensive meat and cheap meat and also uh, some high added value meat. And um, the ones we see first will be those expensive meat and high added value meat. And that's also that's another reason we do cosmetics first, because what we are doing with cosmetics is it's basically func uh, functional compounds produced by cell culture. And that can be integrated into food products to make some like nutraceutical or even pharmaceutical meat. And those are the ones with like, uh, high, high added value meat, which is, uh, which, is up, which is only available by this technology and not by conventional method. So Dr. Hanya, you mentioned the cost of feeding uh, plays a role in, in the cost of, of the end product, but tell us you know, what you are feeding these cell-based products, what goes into sustaining them uh, and developing them in the lab? Cell culture requires a um, uh, culture medium and also the environment where cells grow, which is often provided by like cell culture dish or bioreactor is, uh, if, if large scale. And both has been very expensive, and especially the culture medium. Um, that is because the, um, if you look at culture, if you look at culture medium, it mainly has got two components. One is the bulk, nu bulk nutrients such as sugar, amino acids, and vitamins and like, some minerals, and those are quite cheap. But the the problem is the other component, which is uh, serum and hormonal components, and those hormones tends to be like extremely expensive. Such could be something like to produce 100 gram of meat, you need about quarter million dollar worth of that material. That has to be made cheaper, or if possible, uh, not use it at all. In many cell agriculture startups, the approach is taken is to make these hormones cheaper by using recombinant bacteria or recombinant plant and extraction. But uh, integrity culture company is taking different approach, which is not to use these ex expensive components from the first. And we do it by simulating our own body, and which has got multiple types of cells, such as liver cells or pancreatic cells, or like thyroid cells. And what we do is we culture those cells along with the target cells, which would be like meat cells. So that's really a citizen-based uh, project as you're, as you're talking about. Um, but, but I wonder what you see as maybe other applications for citizen-based science and for uh, for other products that might be developed, other fields of study, uh, what do you think the applications could be beyond uh, beyond meat? Uh, yeah, so applications beyond um, beyond meat could be um, so that's uh, those applications are another reason why uh, we should uh, we should democratize uh, cellular agriculture so that lots of people can try different things, and um, and um, one of the potential applications of those like. Um, people designing meat or other products will be like possibilities uh, a DIY replaceable organ. Although this this could be a bit a bit far in the future. And up for a nearer term, uh, what people could do is to design uh, one's own uh, cultured meat, such as like farmers using uh, using the cells from uh, from his or her own cow, or it could be like a local restaurant chef coming up with new recipe for uh, cell cultured meat. So Dr. Hanya, you mentioned that sci-fi sort of inspired you to, to go on this uh, journey. How close do you think you are to realizing that, that sci-fi vision? First of all, sci-fi sci vision has got no ends, so uh, we can never get closer. <laughs> and with that said, uh, we, we, I sort of, have, uh, sort of have a goal for this particular project on meat, and that is a cell cultured meat facility on Mars. And uh, to be honest, still a long way, but I wouldn't say it's like infinitely far away. And I'm looking into that around 2050, 2060 sort of time. And if it's for even smaller scale, I think even 2030s or 20, like latest 2040 is a quite, is a quite realistic thing. That's incredible. That's truly seeing uh, out of this world possibilities for, for cell-based uh, products. So I think that's a great vision to have a really inspiring one and a great uh, place to end as well. Thank you so much for your time, Dr. Hanyu. Uh, we appreciate you being with us. Uh, that's all the time we have for coffee and conversation today. I'm your host, Shishank Bengali. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.